Greetings fellow 50p collectors, Coin Snatcher back again and an update tonight on the 50p coin collection. So, where do we start tonight? Three coins we're going to have a chat about tonight and we'll get the easy one out of the way first. So the easy one is this coin here. This is a Gibraltar coin. It's the 2019 Gibraltar Island Games coin. Nice portrait on the back of Her Majesty, Gibraltar in the script. And this is the second one of these coins that I've purchased. So quite an interesting design on this coin. Part mirrored, part frosted. Looks very nice. But if we go to the tray, we can see that we've got this coin already. So let's uh, pop this one out of the tray and have a look at the pair of them and see what the difference is. So this is the first coin that I bought well not the first coin I bought but the first one of these pair that I bought and if we have a little zoom in on it we can see that down in the bottom very faint well not very faint but just about here is an AC die mark and just have a little zoom in on this now you could buy this car coin loose or you could buy it in a card and I think the majority of them are AC However, it was brought to my attention by a fellow coin collector, Les, that this coin also has an AB die mark. So, not liking to have a coin missing from the collection. Got straight onto the old flea bay and managed to find this coin. And if we have a little look down here, we can see that instead of the C, it has an A. So, happy day. So, if we pop these two together... And we have another little look. You can see the difference on the die marks there, AB and AC. Now, it would seem logical that with that AB and AC, you would have an AA die mark. But no, 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 that would be way too simple for the Pop Joy Mint. So unfortunately, with this coin, as far as I'm aware, there is no AA die mark coin. So it is what it is, unfortunately. But we'll pop it in a capsule. And we'll get it into the tray. Let's uh, pop this one in first because that's A, B. And then we'll grab a new capsule out. We'll treat the coin, imprison it forever in a capsule. And we'll pop that one in there. And there we go. Happy days. Another coin. We've only got two spaces left now for Gibraltar 50Ps. And we do have a new one that's on the way here. And then we're stuffed. We've only got one space left. So it looks like we're going to need another red tray to keep up with the Gibraltar collection of coins. That's all good. Now, that leads me on then to, well, to the Isle of Man collection. We'll start with this video, seeing as this is here first. And if we have a look up here, we'll see we have a space. And this space has been in the tray since the 23rd of December last year. So the reason for that is if we have a look at this coin, this is the 1984 Choo Choo or Steam Train coin, part of the Isle of Man Christmas 50p collection. If you watch any of the videos, you'll know that this set of coins, this run of coins, is all about the die marks. If we have a little look at this coin, this is a nice condition coin. Got a nice effigy of Her Majesty on the obverse. And if we pop it over to the reverse, then we have a beautiful rendition of the Isle of Man steam train. And we'll have a little zoom in on that just to see the detail on it. And there we go. So plenty of detail in that coin. In fact, there's two trains in the coin. If you look carefully, it might even be three. You've got one, another carriage there or another, what do they call them? The, the, uh, the engine that pulls the trains effectively. It's got a special name, I can't remember. And then it got another train in the background here. I would say there is three because you got three plumes of smoke. Nice little cottage here, smoke coming out the chimney. A couple of guys here shoveling, <clears throat> shoveling coal. And lots and lots of lovely detail in the coin. You got little kids down here playing in the snow, building a snowman. Looks like you got a kid with their dog in the middle here as well just about here 
and then we've got a couple of adults here and they've got shovels obviously loads of snow and they're digging the train out and then on the front of this as well we can see the hooks which is really cool so obviously used for uh, pulling trains backwards if they're stuck and yeah really nice scene of the uh, train being dug out of the snow so if we have a zoom in on this coin over right over here on the left hand side we can see an AA die mark and with this coin at present there's two known AA die marks and I'd been on the hunt for the second one for quite a while so ordered the coin on the 23rd of December and the coin did not arrive so after much to and fro with the seller, he eventually uh, refunded the coin and that was done about four or five weeks later on the 18th or 19th of January, something like that. So that was fine. It sort of was refunded and I forgot about it. And then yesterday, out of the blue, a package turned up, an envelope. And in that envelope was the second 50p, the one that I had actually ordered away back in December and had been refunded on. So I got it out. Let's have a little look at it and we'll compare the two die marks, see if we can see the difference. Bear with me. We'll just get these two coins on top of each other. Let's see, where are we? There we are there. So if we look at this coin, we can see uh, this one on the left hand side the coin the AA is a bit more up down and on this coin the AA is more level there's also less of a space between the two points on the AA than there is on this one the gap is slightly larger now excuse my unsteady hands I can't zoom in too far otherwise you lose the focus but if you look at those two AA die marks very carefully before you start to go blind and rub your eyes, <laughs> you'll see that there is a minor difference between the two. Also on the left hand coin, you can see the A's are more pointy than on the right hand coin where they basically look a bit more squashed. So this is one of the harder ones to find because it's very hard when you're on eBay and you're looking at pictures to determine if there is a difference between the die marks. And you've probably seen my videos before where I've bought coins and the die mark hasn't been right on it. So that was all well and good. So yesterday this coin arrived and I thought I'll email or message the seller and on eBay and let them know that it's arrived. I thought it was quite funny that it would arrive pretty much six weeks after it was ordered. Uh, to which got a reply back to say, well, then are you going to pay for the coin or are you going to refund it or send it back? Sorry. So I messaged the seller and I thought it's a bit strange. I know there's something going on here, but messaged him back and basically said, yeah, I'm more than happy to send it back to you so long as uh, you pay the postage. And I also want compensated for my time. You know, this coin's turned up after six weeks. I've already had the ball ache of waiting for it. I've already had the ball ache of having to go through and get a refund, etc. And it was only about 20 quid. So uh, I wasn't too fussed, to be honest. Well, I got a message back from the seller quite promptly saying that he couldn't believe that I wasn't prepared to pay for it and that because the coin had been delivered, uh, I should pay for it. Otherwise, I was defrauding the royal meal of money. So that was last night and I slept on it and I went to work today, went about my job today and this was in the back of my head all day and I thought when you get home you need to pay for this coin at the end of the day, you've you've got it, you've received it and yes it's six weeks late and it's a ball lake but at the end of the day as the seller said in his message he's had to refund me for the coin and he's lost the coin as well so effectively he had been done over twice so this played in my mind today while it was at work because i'm naturally quite an honest person and i thought to myself when i get home i will message him ask him for his bank details and i'll transfer the money over for the coin and then as i thought about it between sort of four and six o'clock it kept coming back into my mind that 
it wasn't as straightforward as that. So I got home and went on to my messages and went through the messages. And it turned out that the seller had refunded me four weeks after I'd paid for the coin. He refused to refund me until the Royal Mail refunded him. So he sent a message to say the Royal Mail have refunded me and I have passed the refund on to you. Bit different to the conversation we had last night when he told me that he hadn't been refunded and that if I didn't pay for the coin or send it back, then he was getting done over twice. So I messaged him, well, I screenshotted the uh, message that he sent where he told me he had been refunded by the Royal Mail and Basically, he then tried to accuse me of fraud because I said to him, I'm not paying. You've led me up the garden path here. You've tried to tell me that you weren't compensated for your loss and you were compensated. Uh, I've got the message to prove it. You've had a refund. I've got the coin. Yes, technically, I've got the coin for free, but then I've had to wait four to six weeks and four weeks for a refund and six weeks in total before the coin arrived. I've also had to go to the Royal Mail sorting office to see if it was there, uh, go to the Royal Mail, or sorry, go to the post office and get a claim form, etc. And overall, I've been rightly put out for time, effort, and just the overall stress of it. So he sent me back another message to say that basically I was uh, defrauding the Royal Mail, and that was that had to point out to him that he had the contract with Royal Mail when he posted the coin out to me. I did not have a contract with Royal Mail. And as Royal Mail had refunded him for the coin, it's clearly evident that he was the one with the contract. And if anybody's defrauding the Royal Mail, it's him, not me. So one of these little lessons you learn from eBay, uh, you know, just because a, a buyer wants a refund doesn't always mean that they're playing fair. Now, if it had turned out that he hadn't have had a refund or he hadn't have messaged me and said that he had a refund, then I would have paid that 18, 20 quid, whatever it was when I got home tonight. Thankfully, I checked the messages. So rightly or wrongly, that's how that coin's come into the collection. So that's got a little bit of a story behind it. Now, the next coin is probably the most disappointing coin of the evening. And the reason for that is this was bought off a professional coin company, a coin dealer. Picture put up on eBay. This is it here. $49.95 for a 1980 Isle of Man Christmas 50p. So when I looked at the picture that was put on the post on eBay for this coin, it was not this coin it was a bf die mark coin and it was one that i needed for the collection 49.95 is a ridiculous price for this coin because it's not worth anywhere near 49.95 so the reason this coin is no good is because this coin has a bc die mark on it so bc means it's a diamond proof finish but the bc die mark is probably the most common die mark out of all of the diamond proof finish coins in the 1980 series the one i wanted or the one that was pictured on the ebay listing was a bf coin now i messaged the seller said to him this is not the coin that was pictured uh, I will be returning this coin. I either want the coin that was pictured on the listing or I want a refund. Got a message back from the seller to say that the picture he used on the eBay listing was a generic stock picture and he didn't really know what the die marks were, what they meant or the fact that there was different ones. And could I be so kind as to explain to him what these different die marks are? Now, the real reason of doing these videos is to share knowledge and fun and, you know, die marks and all that with other coin people. I find it utterly ridiculous that a coin company specialising in coins will sell a coin for £50 and put a generic picture up on eBay. That in my opinion, is completely unacceptable. If you're a coin company, you are the professional people selling coins and you should know exactly what you're selling. It's not acceptable to put a generic picture up. 
charge 50 pounds for a coin and then send a different coin out to that person. So this coin is being returned to the sender. I'll be posting that back to them on Monday. Now I'm purposely not going to name the coin company because mistakes happen but what does annoy me is the overall lack of professionalism that you know this coin it just shouldn't be sold like that different if it's an individual seller and they put it up in an auction and somebody had paid 15 15 or 20 pounds for it but to put up a picture of a completely different coin that me and any of the other die hunters would know was a completely different picture is just unacceptable uh, as i said if you're a coin dealer coin seller then you should know what you're selling this is not a pocket change 50p that somebody's found in their change and stuck it up on ebay to make you know a couple of quid this bc die mark coin by the way is worth 20 pounds maybe 25 it is not worth anywhere near 50 pounds and had the picture been of this coin i wouldn't have been even entertained bidding on it so thoroughly pissed off with this coin company that have had 50 quid off me and basically sent me a coin that is completely wrong. This will, as I say, be posted back. Now, I'm not going to name the coin company because I don't really see the point in doing that. In the same way, I'm not going to name the seller who tried to accuse me of fraud while secretly was quite happy to take a refund from the Royal Mail and have me pay for the coin today as well. If I change my mind, I may well name them, but that's that's not what I'm going to do tonight because, to be quite honest, I'm angry enough over both of these things and I'm not going to make it any worse. So we'll send this one back. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's done and dusted with the 1984 coin. If, uh, if the seller had been honest with me, then... I probably would have, well, I would have refunded the money today. I was prepared to do it. Uh, you know, even though, as I say, it was four weeks for me to wait for a refund. Four weeks of backwards and forwards with the seller and the Royal Mail trying to get the coin. Uh, only for it to arrive, you know, as I say, well, today's what, the 3rd of February. And that arrived yesterday, the 2nd of February. So 23rd of December order date coin arrived uh, yesterday I know a lot of people will probably say well you know the coins arrived you should pay for it who exactly am I going to pay because at the minute it's the royal mail that's out of pocket and to be quite honest at the minute I've had a silver proof coin that I bought off a Facebook group for 25 quid and that silver proof coin has been stolen by the postman according to the post uh that somebody signed for it at 11.47 a.m. on a Wednesday. Physically impossible that it could be me because I'm out at work and the signature is not my signature. And I've checked with the neighbours and none of them signed it or received it. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the Royal Mail have thieves working for them. And these guys basically stealing stuff. You never know. It may turn up in four or six weeks. But well, that's neither here nor there. So I've got one outstanding case with the Royal Mail where they're trying to fuck me over and that's not going to happen. And I've got this one where they've taken six weeks to deliver a coin. And, you know, then to cap it off today, then <laughs> we've had this one turn up, which is completely wrong as well. So I am not a happy camper at the minute. The only good news is that the sun is starting to set a bit later in the day and slowly but surely more cyclists are starting to come out in fact there was people out riding horses today i don't have a problem with horses i slow down for horses but uh cyclists are starting to come back out and i do enjoy slating the cyclists off so they'll soon be out in their lycra and i'll have somebody to be able to poke fun at so leave your comments below i'm sure some of you probably think that I should have paid for this 1984 coin <laughs> personally I'm pleased that uh, I came back home and checked the messages before handing out any money or refunding any money I think this is utterly disgraceful that a professional coin company can use a generic picture and sell a coin for 50 quid you know I could pick out this coin and you could see the picture of it and that looks stunning I could charge you 50 quid for it and when it arrives you might get this coin here 
not the same coin at all. So uh, not happy today, but shit happens in life, so we'll not worry about it too much. Uh, there should be one or two coins still to arrive, and uh, we'll take it from there. But for now, for this video, that's it. Peace and love. Coin Snatcher out.